What's up everybody? This is Nick from Part-Time Pilot. I hope you guys are having a great day and that your pilot training is going awesome. I'm going to continue my video series on cross-country planning and the step we are on now is the total distance to climb. So if you look back at my video on the cross-country checklist, this is kind of the next major step. Before we compute our fuel time and distance to climb, for each checkpoint during our climb. I wanna find out our total distance to climb and I will tell you why this helps. Let's get to it. So the reason why we wanna find our total distance to climb is because this will tell us the distance it'll take us to reach the top of our climb. Then what we can do is we can just edit our checkpoints, the closest checkpoint, to be right near that top of climb. This does multiple things. One, it helps make our calculations easier because now we don't have a leg of our flight where we have to calculate half of it as climb and the other half as cruise flight. That just gets really complicated. Instead, we'll have legs that are only climb and legs that are only cruise. And then while we're flying, it's gonna help us because we know when we're at this checkpoint that hey, we should be at the top of our climb. It's always good to have those little bits of data points uh, when you're flying on a cross country. Okay, so the first thing we gotta do is we gotta gather the information for our fuel time and distance to climb chart. So let's assume that we're taking off from an airport with an elevation of 500 feet, and we're climbing to a cruise altitude of 6,500 feet. So we got those two values here in blue. And then, so we're also gonna need the altimeter setting at our takeoff airport, the ground temperature at our takeoff airport, and the temperature or loft at our cruise altitude. So for our altim altimeter setting in this example, let's assume 29.80 inches of mercury. Now, this can be gathered from a METAR or a TAF. And sometimes it's hard to find this information in a TAF. Sometimes your airport might not even have a TAF. So look for the closest airport nearby that would have the same type of weather close to the same type of weather that you would have at your airport and look at their TAF and find that uh, altimeter setting if you need to look in the future otherwise do it the morning of um, but obviously we want to do this probably a little bit since it takes so while for ground temperature let's assume 17 degrees celsius you can get this from again a METAR TAF or the local area forecast you can go to aviationweather.org and use their graphical area forecast tool. And then uh, the temperature loft at our cruise altitude, we're gonna assume 11 degrees Celsius. Now this is gonna be gathered from your winds aloft data. And so at 6,500 feet cruise altitude, that's gonna fall between the 6,000 and 9,000 feet. So just interpolate a little to get that value. Moving on, so the first thing we gotta do is our, our airport elevation is not in terms of pressure altitude, but our cruise altitude is in terms of pressure altitude. So we need to have those both in terms of pressure altitude to be able to use our fuel time and distance to climb chart correctly. So we need to convert our elevation to a pressure altitude. So to do that, we're gonna use the following equation. The pressure altitude equals the elevation plus 1,000 times the quantity of 29.92 inches of mercury minus the altimeter setting. So 29.92 is the standard day altimeter setting minus the actual altimeter setting that and that uh, difference then times a thousand then plus elevation so if we do 29.92 minus 29.80 which was our altimeter, our altimeter setting we get 0 0.12 times 1000 equals 120 plus 500 equals 620 so now we have our elevation in terms of pressure altitude all right, so now we're ready to use our fuel time distance to climb chart. We have everything we need. We have our takeoff pressure altitude, our cruise pressure altitude, our ground temperature, and our cruise temperature. All right, so now to do this, we're gonna, it's gonna be in three steps to find the values of fuel time and distance to climb from when we take off to when we get to cruise. Step one is we find the fuel time distance to climb values at our takeoff elevation and takeoff temperature. Second step is we do the same thing. We find these values at our cruise altitude and temperature. And step three, we subtract our cruise altitude values by our takeoff altitude values. That difference in those values for fuel, time, and distance to climb will be the fuel, time, and distance to climb it takes to travel from take off to cruise. So let's do it. Okay, so step one. So this is the fuel time and distance to climb chart for the PA-28, a Piper Cherokee. You wanna make sure that you are using the correct POH or AFM for your aircraft. So once you have located that, you can come over here and 
use the fuel time distance to climb chart and get started. So first thing you do is you find the temperature down here on the left side of the chart on this x-axis on the left side. You follow that temperature, you draw a straight line up from that temperature until you reach your pressure altitude. Now the pressure altitudes are here on these curved lines, okay? So our pressure altitude for our takeoff airport is only 620 feet. So this 1000 line you can see right here, we're gonna be just a little bit above halfway from the starting point to that 1000 line. Once we get there, we're gonna draw a horizontal line all the way over until we meet these three curves for fuel, time, and distance, okay? Now when you have such a small elevation like this, all these lines are really close together down here. So it gets pretty tough to distinguish different values. But anyways, draw a line down at each point where this horizontal line in intersects these curves. So draw a line down from the, where it intersects the fuel line, draw a line down from where it intersects the time, and draw a line down from where it intersects the distance. And then read off the values on this x-axis. Each block is two, a value of two, and then you'll have your values for fuel time and distance to climb. So what we get from here, if you can zoom in, that's why I like to do it on the computer. I can zoom in and I can really uh, get a little bit more accurate, but we get a value, fuel value of 0.4 gallons, time value of 1.5 minutes, and a distance value of 1.5 nautical miles. So now we move on to step two. Now we do the same exact thing, but we do it at our cruise temperature and our cruise altitude. So our cruise temperature is 11 degrees, so we find 11 degrees on this axis right here. We draw strut lines all the way up to 6,500, which is gonna be, be between the 7,000 and the 6,000 line. So right in the middle, once we reach that point, we draw a horizontal line all the way over through these three curves, and then we draw three vertical lines down from the intersection of our horizontal line and these three uh, curves for fuel time and distance. We draw it all the way down, and then we can read off our values on this x-axis down here. And what do we get? We get fuel value of four gallons, time value of 14 minutes, and distance value of 22.5 minutes. So now, our final step, step number, number three, we subtract the values we just got from the values we got before in step one at our takeoff airport. So we do four minus 0.4 for fuel to get 3.6 gallons. We do 14 minus 1.5 to get 12.5 minutes for time and we do 22.5 minus 1.5 to get 21 nautical miles for distance. Now these are the fuel time and distance values to climb from our pressure altitude of 620 feet at our ground temperature to our cruise altitude of 6,500 feet at our cruise temperature. So now we know our total distance to, it'll take to reach the top of our climb is 21 nautical miles, okay? Now we can go back to our course drawn on our iPad or our sectional chart, and we can find our closest checkpoint and we can edit it slightly if we don't already have one so that it's 21 nautical miles away from our starting point. Now this checkpoint will be our top of climb checkpoint. It makes things a lot easier. Now everything, all the legs before that point can be calculated as climb and all the legs after that can be calculated as cruise and then descent. So that's what I will cover in my next video. I will cover the multiple legs of climb and how to back out what altitude you will be at since now we know the total distance and we know the distance of each checkpoint in that climb. So stay tuned, please subscribe if you haven't so you can get a notification for that video and follow me on Instagram at part period time period pilot and then again if you subscribe on youtube send me a dm on instagram at part period time period pilot tell me send me a screenshot that you subscribed and i will send you a free study guide that i've been making as we go on it grows all the time so subscribe send me a message i will get you that free study guide it's great for studying on the go you can have it on your phone ipad whatever or you can print it off and it makes great flashcards so hope you guys have a great day and keep studying hard and just know that if it gets tough, it's going to be all worth it because one day you're going to be a pilot, baby. All right. Thanks, guys.